Sermon to Those Preparing for Holy Communion by St. Sebastian Dabovich Let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation unto himself. St. Paul, 1 Corinthians 11, 28, and 29 These words of the Apostle are terrible, and so are they as the truth unfailing. Verily the judgment is heavy and the damnation terrible for the one who receives the body and blood of Christ without due honor and without such a disposition of the Spirit as is required. A terrible judgment has befell that apostate people who sentence our Lord Jesus Christ to be crucified. When they cried, His blood be on us and on our children. But that unfortunate people did not know the mystery of the incarnation of the Son of God and committed the greatest crime in blindness and ignorance. For had they known, says St. Paul, they should not have crucified the Lord of glory. Of how much sore punishment, suppose ye, shall be worthy of such a one who was born in Christianity. From childhood taught in the mysteries of the faith, and notwithstanding all this, hath, by lightheartedness and carelessness, trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant, wherewith He was sanctified, an unholy thing, and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. Hebrews 10.29 Hence the reason why the Church with such care strives to prepare us for the reception of the life-giving mysteries of Christ by fast, prayer, repentance. After a few moments when the cup of the covenant shall be brought out, unto which we must approach in order to reanimate within us, renew and strengthen our covenant with Jesus Christ, we will hear that the last call of the church which, which summons us, with fear of God and faith, approach ye. In those sacred moments, let be hushed within us all other thoughts, let be banished from our souls all other feelings, besides those unto which the Holy Church would elevate our spirits. Let us draw near with fear of God, faith, and love, that we may be partakers of the life eternal that we may inspire within us that sacred fear, let us consider, where are we now? Before whom do we stand? Unto what do we approach? Where are we? Moses, Moses, called God to his selected leader of Israel, draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Exodus 3, 5. Since the place unto which God once descended has become sanctified, and to which the man who was called the friend of God could not approach without care, then how much holier is the place which is sanctified by such often repeated dissensions of the Holy Ghost, at the consecration of the terrible mysteries upon which even the angels look with fear? Before whom do we stand? It is the God of unapproachable glory, from whose presence it was once that Sinai blazed and trembled, the God Almighty, who spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. That which is not, he nameth a thing existing. He maketh to die and maketh to live. He lowereth unto hell and raiseth up again. The God all holy, who bears not with iniquity and shuns unrighteousness. The Lord, a jealous God, who exacts of children the sins of fathers even unto the third and fourth generations. The God all-righteous, who came down to see the wickedness of the citizens of Sodom and Gomorrah, and which cities the heavenly flame swallowed up. It is true that God appears to us here in his, ho- his body and blood, without external grandeur and glory, without terrible manifestations. For were it otherwise... We would say, as the Israelites had said, Let not God speak with us, lest we die. Unto what do we approach? To the divine body, which Simeon, the saintly old man, had once received in his hands with holy fear. To the divine body, by the touch of which the sick were healed, the leprous cleansed, and which the demons feared before the nakedness and wounds of which the sun darkened, the earth quaked, the rocks break, to the most glorious body, which ascended into the heavens and upon which the cherubim and the seraphim look with fear, 
True it is that it appears to us in the form of common food. But were it otherwise, we would say with Peter, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. And so it is here we stand, such as the presence, such is the presence we stand before, and such is that unto which we approach. Great is the gift we receive from the hand of the Lord. Holy is his most pure body, holy is his life creating blood. And therefore let us approach the cup of the covenant with greater care and more fear, that we may not be scorched with its flame, that we may receive the flesh and blood of Christ, not unto judgment and condemnation, but unto the cleansing, the sanctification, and the enlivening of our nature decaying in sin. Amen.